I think we have Harley Schlanger. Harley, I mentioned to give a little bit of a snippet of the the dirty deal behind the scenes of the Detroit uh, bankruptcy. And most people don't realize that this contagion is not stopped, and they don't put it up Glass-Steagall. It's like a tent that starts ripping along the seam. The uh, fabric of the American economy is about to rip to pieces, and uh, the uh, caretaker in the White House is literally a guy ready to push the plunger to demolish the economy with a hard hat on, and people don't believe it. Well, I think all they have to do is look at the reality of Detroit, and I hope you can hear me because I'm on a car on the Los Angeles freeway. We can, we, can, we, we can hear you really well, actually. You're a little muffled, and unfortunately, because you're in a vehicle, the, uh, the uh, cell phone is trying to make contact to the tower, so you're getting more than your dose of uh, cell phone radiation, so take some extra vitamin C when you're done. All right, well, I'll and maybe our that, new, our new, Detroit might and, not and survive our, the bankruptcy. But what was done with Detroit, and you may have covered some of this, but let me just go through from the top. The city is not bankrupt because of corruption or mismanagement. It's bankrupt because of post-industrial, free trade, deregulation, environmentalist policies over 40 years. And what happened is that the city has reached a point where... They cannot afford to finance their debt, to repay their debt, especially at the interest rates, and to pay back the interest rate swaps and derivatives, and still maintain the city and the pensions. Now, here's where the fraud comes in, and a lot of conservatives are a little bit mixed up on this. People who are retiring public workers already paid into their pension plan. What the city did under this emergency financial management act is they got a bankruptcy expert who came in cut a deal with the banks so the banks will get 80 to 90 cents on the dollar for their debt but the people with the pensions who already paid into the city pension fund will get 10 to 20 percent of their retirement funds so this is what LaRouche is calling a bail-in where money that was paid into the system which is like a deposit in a bank is being seized and transferred to the bankers. And so the people who worked in the city, who retired with a pension, are the ones who get screwed, whereas the bankers who ran up the credit card on Detroit get almost everything back. Wow. That's criminal activity. And the federal judge is blocking the lawsuits trying to stay the lawsuits to stop the bankruptcy it's very evident that uh, <clears throat> things are out of control and going to rip really soon <laughs> to proportionally larger bigger workforces than bankruptcy choice right. Welcome back, and Harley, you need to repeat what you just told me. This is a criminal enterprise. A lot of people will blame Detroit because it's had this stigma that it is mismanaged. If there was criminal mismanagement, the mayor and other people involved would be jailed. This is not criminal mismanagement. What this is, is the state of, of Michigan actually ordered a, a emergency manager. They tried to shove something through the unconstitutional and force the city of Detroit into bankruptcy, uh, which is unconstitutional. And then a federal judge stayed in and actually tried to stay the uh, lawsuits to prevent the bankruptcy from proceeding. Many of the pensioners will get 20 cents on the dollars, and these derivative managers, these bankers, will get 80 cents. This is a criminal enterprise. And and you mentioned something very prescient, which means we're going to have uh, pension funds all across the country bailed in by this policy that Obama and the Queen of England and the Bank of England brought in last year, the Bank of Canada, the Royal Bank of Canada, all the banks across the Western world and Europe, which basically means your deposits are no longer secure, your pension fund isn't secure, even if you paid into it your entire career life, 30, 40 years in the police force, your money will be bailed in at 20 cents on the dollar you'll get, and the banks will be scot-free walking away with 80 cents on the dollar while you're destitute. And this could create a tsunami of bankruptcies across the country, and not just here. It's happened in Japan now. There's uh, this bond market blowout is literally, uh, you know, municipal bonds is going to, if it builds, if it actually shows legal precedent, will spread around the world. This is really well, bad, just, and there's zero me, growth in China right there's... now. Yeah, let tell me, them the details. A sense of this, because the city of Houston today filed a suit against Barclays and other banks. The city, the county, Sacramento County, 
filed a suit against banks. This is over LIBOR, because it's not only that the banks loaned money to cities at a point in which cities were no longer able to pay it. It's that in order to loan the money to do city bonds, the cities had to get insurance. They had to buy insurance called uh, credit default swaps, risk management, from the same banks that loaned them the money. With the bank, that the idea of the insurance swap, the interest rate swap, is that if rates you bet, if rates go up or down, you'll be covered by the bond that you're buying, the, the derivative swap you're buying. But what that happens, seems to be very unethical banks, and illegal to, to, to force well, them to buy insurance, uh, which is leveraged against a, a default. Well, and not only that, but the banks that make you the loan sell you the insurance or direct you to the investment banks to buy the insurance, but they already know that the rates were going to go down because they were rigging the LIBOR. People probably right. forgot the scandal, but the, the London Interbank rate, LIBOR, was set right. by about eight banks, and they rigged it to make the banks look like they were in better shape than they were. And so what that meant is that they were selling products that if the rates went down, the cities had to pay more for them. They knew when they sold that the rates were going down. That's fraud. And that should be criminal corruption. These bankers should be going to jail. The Barclays Bank, right. uh, the uh, Bank of Scotland, Hong Chang, Hong Chang, Citibank, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, these are criminal enterprises. And they're protected by Barack Obama and the cowardice of the Congress, which is sticking with Dodd-Frank, which protects them, rather than Glass-Steagall, which would put them in prison. Yeah, you know, you know what the problem is. The people that make jumpsuits have run out of orange. Well, they, they haven't run out of jumpsuits for a sixteen-year-old kid selling crack. But a, no, a but they run out of orange for the for dollars on an illegal trade. Uh, yeah, yeah. Doesn't get an orange jumpsuit. He gets three Armani suits. Right, exactly. What we're seeing now is the final uh, house of cards is coming down. And if the Detroit thing happens, and they may try to make it a hard case, they want to make it a hard case because Detroit looks like a good set for Armageddon. But the but actual me, fact it's just, not. Let me, let me, let me just it's not mismanagement, it's a criminal enterprise. Yeah, please continue. Well, here's, the, here's an important point. The, the state court judge, I can't remember her name right now. But she had in front of her a, a uh, motion to prevent the bankruptcy, to give the city more time to work this out, and to do it outside of the power of the emergency financial manager. Someone tipped off the emergency financial manager, a man named Kevin Orr, who said the motion was about to be ruled on by her. And so he moved in the bankruptcy court, which immediately rubber-stamped his filing. And so they did it to preempt the judge ruling that this bankruptcy was unconstitutional. And not only that, but now they're going in the federal court to find the state court judge in contempt for her ruling, which is a ruling which is a really straightforward piece of Miss Michigan constitutional law which said that the pension funds are inviolable. That means that you cannot take money out of the pension funds for anything other than to pay back pensions. Instead, they're looting right. the pension funds, just as the banks in Cyprus looted the, the depositors' accounts to pay off bank debt. Right. Well, what this basically means is the federal government has decided it's time to pull the economy. And Obama and the federal and the international bankers have decided we're even going to find and contempt the judge who enforces state law in Michigan to protect pension funds that are inviolable. That is really, really over the top. Well, and then you add to that that who are the people getting hit? And by the way, the same thing was done by one of your favorite guys, the mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, who is canceling now the city health insurance for retired workers and saying that instead they now have to go into the government pool to buy private insurance under Obamacare. 
So no. they're losing a well-funded, good health insurance policy that was promised to them for their year of work for the city. And now they're going to have to go into the crapshoot called Obamacare, where they're going to pay a lot for premiums for poor quality health insurance from private companies. No. Yeah. yeah this, that's uh, you know, hey, I'll, I'll tell you what. Under one proviso, that the president and the senators and congressmen accept the same program. Oh, they'll never accept no. it. And, no. and don't forget, Rahm Emanuel's <clears throat> brother, Ezekiel Emanuel, was one of the authors of Obamacare. And Ezekiel Emanuel is on record as saying we should not be paying money to take care of people at the end of life. And for him, the end of life is whenever you're no longer healthy and you now need care. Actually, I think you can. I'm going to give you credit for this because uh, uh, you've got quite a dry sense of humor. I think you called him Easy Kill Emmanuel. Easy Kill Emmanuel. That's exactly what we called him. <laughs> and it, it fits. And, and this is, these two brothers are criminals. Rahm Emanuel went into mayor of Chicago knowing full well that the city could not afford to pay its, its overwhelming debt and still maintain the pension system. He promised he would protect the pension system. And now what he's doing is the same thing they're doing in Detroit, same thing that's happening in Birmingham, Alabama, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. By the way, very quickly, just before the break, a Republican state senator in Pennsylvania, because of this happening to cities all over Pennsylvania, including the capital in Harrisburg, has introduced a bill to make the sale of derivatives and swap agreements illegal in Pennsylvania. Wow. That's good. Uh, see, the thing is that we need this uh, in chunks, but we need international law so that they, the money cannot be, uh, this Ponzi scheme can't be stretched to other countries and other places in the world. Uh, it also will prevent the flood of pension funds, municipal and other bonds that are buying in, in literally investing in slave markets of manufacturing in third world countries, where, as Walter Burian says, is the main, one of the main problems why we have international slave state right now in India and these other countries and why our business has all left this country. Not only is bad policy here that makes it impossible to start business, easy in China, India, and Indonesia, but also the uh, derivatives market and uh, these rules will class legal. I shake my head when I think I can't get in shock the next day. Things can't get worse. And I'm constantly surprised because I'm an optimist. Otherwise, I wouldn't do the show. Uh, but when you check the facts, I mean, we're not conspiracy theorists. As Tex Mars says, we're conspiracy scientists. You've been at this business a long time. I've been uh, reviewing these for years now. And I've been on the inside of government departments. We have contacts inside Homeland Security, the Pentagon, etc. Financial experts, geopolitical. We have literally a converging superstorm of economic, environmental, and uh, and uh, other disasters. And the government, instead of you know reducing the problems, are amplifying it. They're obviously, they're all Obama. Avoidable. All, all these problems are avoidable. Right. And what uh, what Obama is doing in the federal uh, progressive communists. And the federal judges, is they're actually trying to implement things that are against the state constitution of, of Michigan and bailing in with people's pension funds to pay off banks, which is a form of economic genocide. And I, I saw a female police officer, she said, and her left eye was kind of bloodshot. She was so upset. She obviously was crying hard. A uh, former police officer and her husband both retired from the Detroit, Detroit Police Force. And they said, well, we put into our pension funds for 30-some years. That was their money put into a pension fund that was guaranteed not to be uh, inviolable, not to be able to be seized by the state or the city or anybody else. And yet now they're going to say we're going to give you 20 cents on the dollar so we can manage our money better? Come on. See, is this, this is a republic? What is this? The republic was we have a, a government, this is not a democracy, where we protect the individual from the majority, 
we don't protect the individual or we don't get rid of the individual when they're expedient because quote the system the machine needs to get rid of that that cog in the wheel this is very much the opposite of republic this is the anti-constitutional approach that was taken going back to bush jr and cheney that obama has taken and run with which is the idea that the leader will have should have the power over and above courts and the legislature. See, the, the Congress doesn't go along with every one of these things, and the courts don't go along with them all. The problem is that Obama is asserting he has a right as the leader, the same way Hitler had this concept called the Führer Prinzip, that the leader is the one who is supposed to act for the people. But what if the people don't go along with the leader? Or well, you kill them. Now, I, I think that it's important to note that We've seen laws that were on the books from the last depression thrown off the books over the last 20 years to allow banks to take more risk, more risk with other people's money. And when they lose, it's the people, the other people who lose the money because the bankers still make the profit on the trades. And then the banks increasingly, after the repeal of Glass-Steagall, the banks could and take other people's money and invest it in their own name and make the profit from it, whereas you get the loss. Now, this violates the Constitution. But right. the, but, and, and this is something we were talking about in the break. If you change a law so that you make something legal which is against the principles of our republic, is that acceptable? No. And this is where... The courts are supposed to protect us. The Congress is supposed to protect us from an overpowerful executive. But ultimately, the only protection we have is the people. And it's up to the people now to resist this Detroit-style thievery. Because what this means, Dr. Deagle, is that what the people of Cyprus had crammed down their throat by the European Union and the International Monetary Fund, just as LaRouche predicted, is now happening in the United States. And if people want to fight it, they've got to join us because there's no one else who's clear on this. And I want to give out our, our local number, our, our toll-free number, rather. Uh, last time I was on, we got a bunch of calls from people who wanted to do something. We're still right. heavily in the Congress. We're mobilizing to pound the hell out of these congressmen to get them to realize that they can't sit there and allow this to occur. So if you have right. a pencil or a pen, call us at 800 922 2907. That's 800-922-2907. And it's what LaRouche said. Act as though your life depends on it, because it does. Yeah, it really does. And I don't think people understand the bail-in. They'll say, oh, yeah, they want the hard case of Detroit. They figured, well, we can let Detroit go. No, you can't, because this means they're soon going to come after your pension funds. They're soon going to bail in your bank account. And if they do get funding for uh, Obamacare, which is 20,000 IRS officers, they're going to be ripping and tearing through the economy. It's only incidentally effective on health care in a very negative way. Its main thing is to get into your bank accounts and have total control of the population. It is part of the final matrix array of laws put in since the John Warner Defense Act, the Patriot Act 1 and 2, and the National Defense Authorization Act, the Appropriations Act, all the other horrors have been put in place. Obamacare and now this bail-in policy since last year, this is craziness. And people well, don't understand know, that the last shred of, of liberty is about to go. There's about $6 trillion in individual deposits in the nation's banking system. And that banking system needs about $9 trillion to refinance their bad debt. And the right. Federal Reserve is only giving them $85 billion a month. So they need money from somewhere else, and that's why Barney Frank and Chris Dodd and the whole Congress supported the Dodd-Frank bill that allows under Title II bail-in thievery, but does not allow you to have your, your deposits protected. You can forget the FDIC. They're going to throw that out the window. Uh, Thomas Honig, the former Kansas City Federal Reserve President, who is now vice chair of the FDIC, himself is campaigning for Glass-Steagall. He says without Glass-Steagall, one too big to fail bank is, that starts to go will bring them all down, and they're going to take everything. They're going to clean out the banking system, 
keep the money and leave you with nothing. Wow. That, that, this is this is mind-boggling, and and I know that last year you talked about this that Obama and his globalist bankers were eyeing the six trillion plus to I think you said it's not six trillion, it's like more like sixteen to eighteen trillion dollars in uh, in pension funds. This but means that pension, pension funds, funds right, yeah, yeah, it, right across the country. We're talking about up to twenty trillion dollars almost that will be seized by these banks to bail into the, to make them not only more solvent, if you look at the profit margins of J.P. Morgan Chase and other banks, they're posting the largest profits probably in history uh, during a time when banking is cr- closing down credit and businesses well, are going lending, bankrupt. Is, lending is contracting, even while they're getting money from the Federal Reserve. And what's happening right. is that they need to cover hundreds of trillions of dollars of bad debts. They don't need all the money to cover all the bad debts because some of it wipes itself out. But they need upwards of 60 to 600 trillion, depending on which economist you, you look at. Uh, but $60 trillion is four times the current U.S. GDP. They can't come up with all that money. They're just going to come up with every penny they can, and they're going to take it from the defenseless American people and we're defenseless because the Congress is gutless, the Supreme Court is a bunch of fascists, and the president is the biggest fascist thief of all. Yeah, it's just true, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty uh, mind-boggling. Uh, it's but so you know, shocking. You don't Congress think you Congress is still in session until August 2nd. <clears throat> and we've got our people in today. There are a couple of state legislators who are in backing us up. The president of the school board of Detroit is going around with Bill Roberts, one of our former congressional candidates, to shake up the Michigan delegation and saying, why the hell are you letting this happen? It's not just Detroit, it's also Pontiac, it's Grand Rapids, it's all the formerly industrial cities of Michigan that are being looted by these emergency managers. Right. Wow. Wow. Uh, it almost leaves you speechless, doesn't it? It does. It, it leaves me speechless. It's like, it's like I'll tell you what. It's like standing on a battlefield and hearing the silence before you can hear the mortar off thirty and forty miles away, and you know you don't yet see the tanks and the jets, but you know the battle is coming. Well, or you're sitting in your house and, and you hear the sound of the drone right before it hits you. Yeah, exactly. You can hear the whistle as the hypersonic drone is about to blow you to bits. So you better act I mean, before the drone is at your door. Yeah, exactly. Again, I mean, can uh, call me. Call me to get into the fight. 800-922-2907. And by the way, we need to burn the phones over this immigration bill, which is all tied to the national biometric ID, which they want to replace this banking system with by December 24th, the nightmare before Christmas. And we did back in 2000, I think it was 7. It hasn't happened yet. We need Glass-Steagall, we need to kill this immigration bill, we need to have tariffs, we need to have a new system and get rid of these criminals. Amazing. Thank you, Harley. Amazing program. 